Hi, in this video I will tell you about dynamic product groups. But what are dynamic product groups? Dynamic product groups are groups of products that you can define with their own conditions. These can then be used in different aspects of shopware, so for example for categories, these products will then be displayed in the category dynamically, or for product feeds for Google, for example. These groups are dynamic, as as soon as the condition no longer applies to the product, the product will no longer be in that dynamic product group and will therefore no longer be displayed in the category, for example. The dynamic product groups can be accessed in the Shopify 6 administration via catalogs and dynamic product groups. Here you would usually see all your dynamic product groups that you've already created. However, I haven't created one yet, so there's nothing in this list. So now we can add a new dynamic product group by pressing on this button. And here we will first of all have the general information, so a name. This depends on what you want to do with this dynamic product groups. So if I want to say, for example, this dynamic product groups should have all the products that are under 50 euros, I will then just say lower 50 euros, for example. Then I can also add the description if I need, if I need one. So if I want to be more clear for my colleagues who are also working in the administration, I can also add this here. Underneath the general information, we then have the conditions. So here we can select what the conditions are for the products to be in this dynamic product group. So by default, it's always selected product is equal to, so you can also just set the products that you want in this dynamic product group. However, there are a lot of conditions. So for example, if it has free chip shipping, the weight, the width, height, um, how often the product has been sold, for example, and everything sort of this type. And however, we want to have every product that is lower than 50 euros. So we'll just select the price. Then we can choose an operator. So it's equal to, is greater than, greater than e or equal to. So we can have all these options, but as we want them to be lower than 50 euros, we then say is less than and then we select the operator of 50. Then we can already save the condition and check out the preview that is directly available. So now you can see, first of all, there's no products found, but there is the reason for this is that the headless sales channel is selected and none of my products are set to be shown in the headless sales channel. So here we can now check the real sales channel that I'm using. And here we can now see all sorts of products that have a price beneath 50 euros. Now, if we think the condition with just price is less than 50 euros, for example, isn't enough, we can also add another end condition, where we can then add another condition that has to be true for the product to be in this dynamic product group. So for example, if I just say active, yes. So the product also has to be active. Otherwise, we can also add a or condition. So now we can say the price is less than 50 euros and has to be active, or the product is equal to just some product, for example. So either one of these conditions has to be true, or is if one of these conditions is true, the product will be in the dynamic product group. Then we can also add subconditions, which are basically another and condition, so this has to be true, and whatever is in this subcondition has to be true. However, in this subcondition, I can also add an or condition. So I can then say the first condition has to be true, and then one of the second two conditions. However, in this case, we won't need this, so we can just delete the container and then save the dynamic product group. Now let's check some examples where you can actually use this dynamic product group. So one of the examples I already told you with a category where you can have a dynamic product group as the products that are set to this category. So let's create a new category, for example, sale. Then activate the category and already save it. 
then we can move over to the products tab and now the product assi assignment is the menu selection but here you can then choose the dynamic product group and select the dynamic product group that you want to use in this category. So I'm choosing the lower 50 euros one and saving. And now after adding this dynamic product group, let's take a look at the storefront and how this category looks like. So in the storefront, you can now see the category sale. And within this category are all the products that are lower than 50 euros and now you might be thinking, well, in the dynamic product group, there were quite a lot more products than you can see here, but that was just the case as there were two variant products in that dynamic product group and every product or every variant is shown in the dynamic product group. But in this case, you can only see the main variants that are displayed in the product settings. Another use case for the dynamic product groups would be a product slider, for example, in a shopping experience. So in this case, we'll just edit the home page, for example, and then add the commerce block of a product slider. Just add it into the layout. And then after pressing onto the block, you can go into the settings select a title so for example we can use sale again and then usually you can have a manual assignment or again you can add the dynamic product group and then select the dynamic product group here you can also select the sorting so either by name ascending or creation date for example random or by price you can also select the maximum number of products so if there's like a hundred products in the dynamic product group, you can set this to 10, for example. Now let's save the shopping experience and take a look at the storefront once again. So now looking at the home page, you can directly see the slider and the three products that are in the dynamic product group are also displayed in here.